In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I wonder if you have a person in your life, could be a spouse, friend, a co-worker, uh, maybe a relative, somebody who, if they asked you to do something, your immediate response is always, or almost always, sure, of course, happy to. These are the kinds of people uh, who help you move, for example. Someone whom you trust so deeply that even if what they asked you was strange or difficult, you might be curious but would still not hesitate at all to help them. So I'll give you an example. Someone you know and love asked you for a thousand dollars. No questions asked. And if you had it, you give them the money. No questions asked. In other words, this is a person you have trust with and trust in. Enough so that what they say matters. You see, ever since I read today's gospel earlier in the week, all I could think about was how much Philip trusted Jesus and how much Nathaniel trusted Philip and how that trust is what made all the difference. And the gospel describes it without much elaboration, quite, quite plainly actually. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Two words, an invitation really. Two words which completely changed Philip's life. But as we are to see, it not only changed Philip's life, but the life of another. As far as I can tell, when it comes to the spiritual life, it's not a question of whether we will follow, but rather what, or more likely, who will we follow. We all have, I hope, trusted people who we would do anything for, the same way we might have trusted sources of information that we hold in higher esteem than other sources. When it comes to the spiritual life, it's not a question of whether we will follow, but rather who we will follow. Jesus asked Philip to follow him, and he did. The passage is a bit short on information, except to say what it does not say doesn't have Philip reply to Jesus, thank you for that lovely invitation, let me get back to you. The kind of response we might give when the trust isn't quite there. Philip's act of trusting sets a whole chain of events in motion. So much so that he does something right away. Philip searches out for someone else to share this amazing news with. We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph, Joseph from Nazareth. Now, unlike Philip, Nathaniel has a more sober response. I'm not sure anything or anyone worth listening to has ever come out of Nazareth. I'm paraphrasing, but you get the gist of what he said. But notice something else. This time it's Philip, not Jesus, who invites. It's Philip who says, come and see. And Nathaniel, because he trusts Philip, decides to go. And then we get this fascinating and really beautiful exchange when Jesus sees Nathaniel coming to him and says, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Some translations say, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. I think this better captures Nathaniel's approach to all things spiritual. To be without guile is to mean what you say. Say what you mean. It is to be plain spoken, clear, and to trust that others will be the same. Nathaniel's approach to his spiritual life is most commendable. 
And of course he is curious as to how Jesus knows his character. Where did you get to know me? And Jesus apparently shares a bit of information, information that he would have no way of actually knowing. I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. To the Jewish people, the fig tree always stood for peace. It was a place you could be left undisturbed, where you could have some shade and time, and you could think, possibly meditate. My sense of this brief exchange is this. Jesus knew what Nathanael needed even before Nathanael did. And because of Philip, Nathanael was in a position to trust. To trust that Jesus was what he needed more than anything else. Now, my question for you is the same question um, I ask myself. Do I trust Jesus enough to follow him above all else? And if I do, who does God want me to introduce to Jesus? I totally understand that most Episcopalians, really most Christian, find these questions a little difficult, maybe even a little distasteful. We might say things to ourselves like, who am I to presume what another person needs? spiritually or otherwise. Or we might say, well, you know, we're not evangelicals and Bible thumpers pushing our beliefs on others. We might be concerned, what if I make the other person uncomfortable? And then sometimes I think if we're really honest, we can say to ourselves, what if I'm simply too uncomfortable? But here's the thing, none of these questions ever appeared to be on Philip's mind. When he simply said to Nathaniel, come and see. When it comes to the spiritual life, it's not a question of whether we will follow, but rather who we will all follow. Who we follow matters but not just for us. Who we follow matters for folks like Nathaniel in today's gospel. Who we follow matters for folks like your family members or your friends or your co-workers. Who we follow matters for folks you know who are struggling. Who we follow matters for folks who don't yet know about St. John's. Why? Because God might just use us. Use us to give them the most important invitation of their life. And all it takes is three simple words said by you and said by me. Come and see.